ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه وصحبه اجمعين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم Indeed, the praise is for Allah, and therefore we praise him. We seek his help, his assistance, his guidance. We seek refuge with Allah. We seek refuge for, with Allah from the evil that emanates within ourselves and the harm thereof. We give all the testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah. Highly glorified is he. He has no part in the dominion of his creation. We give further testimony that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed, is his servant and messenger. Peace and prayers be upon him. on his family his companions and all those who gather in righteousness what follows that after i mean o you who believe have taqwa well for allah as it is proper to have taqwa well for him as it is his right to receive taqwa well, and die not except as muslims surely allah speaks the truth assalamu alaikum we thank allah for allowing us to gather on this blessed day this blessed occasion this time of remembrance the time of reflection the time of hope the time where we are able to look at ourselves as we are right now but to also consider the possibilities for our future so the muslim life it is a life that is certainly one of pragmatism it is one where we recognize the reality of our day to day our, our situations that we find ourselves in but is it also a life that is uh, embodied in the word hope the muslim never despairs of allah's mercy of allah's help the muslim is always aware that whatever however good their present life might be there is a hope and a belief that what waits for us after after giving of ourselves after recognizing Allah's plan for our lives after living in accordance with his um according to his deen we recognize that there is a reward that is far greater than anything that we might experience in this life inshallah and we also recognize that however difficult our present circumstances might be however challenging that they might be we recognize that the mercy of Allah is not always in lifting the situation right it's not always in uh a, a difficult situation disappear that's not all you know there are plenty of circumstances we see where that's not the case but we understand that there is also a reward that exists for those who deal with their difficulties who deal with their challenges the tribulations with patience right never losing sight that Allah has a reward that is greater than any difficulty Right? and matter of fact the reward that we get for our patience for our our struggling it it actually it far outweighs the effort that we give with regard to our patience with regard to our strength right so the muslim life it is one that is uh, encapsulated in the word in the word hope so we work we believe we speak all in the hope that the the promise that Allah has given us that it is true as a matter of fact it's not not even a, a hope thing right because Allah says that uh, Allah's promise it is true there's no there's no doubt in that so inshallah uh in, in today's khutbah we want to speak about the intersection of the three things uh intellect community uh and culture not necessarily in that order but we're going to begin with intellect you know intellect uh community and culture So Allah tells us this is a sort of room this is the the 30th ayah A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim Faqim wajhaka lid-din hanifa fitrat Allahi allati fatara an-nas 'alayha la tabdila li khalqillah ذلك الدين القيم ولكن اكثر الناس لا يعلمون صدق الله العظيم so set thy face steadily and truly to the faith 
establish the law's handiwork according to the pattern on which he has made mankind. No change let there be in the work wrought by Allah that is the standard religion, but most among mankind understand not. It is, we hear the word uh, uh, fitra in there, right? The pattern. Um, but it's, it's at the very end that the intellect is really brought back up again. It says, most among, among mankind understand not. Don't let there be any change in the, in the deen or the pattern on which Allah has created mankind and the work that comes from that, right? And the pattern on which we have been created is one where we recognize the supremacy of Allah. All right, the very first thing that Allah has done for, for, for mankind and the person of uh, 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 considering Adam alayhi salam, is right, that he was mated with his intellect, right? He was taught, right? And the first thing that he recognizes, he recognizes supremacy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He recognizes his origin. He is given, he is given knowledge, right? Not just knowledge, but he is given understanding. Right, because there's a difference between having knowledge and having understanding. So when Allah speaks in this particular ayat, he says most among mankind understand not. He is speaking once again to the intellect, the original intellect that Allah has given us that is supposed to be a guide for us in our life. And it's supposed to bring us back to that taqwa that we're supposed to have for Allah. Never lose for Allah and not give to any anything else. Right, this, this regard, this reverence that is only due for Allah says, but how do you get to a point where you don't have understanding? Well, you consider you could be interested in, in flight, in learning about flight, right? But you don't understand the basic mechanics of flight. Somebody hands you a book about flight, and you start reading all of the, uh, all of the, 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 the things, the elements that go into building a plane. You don't understand the terminology. You can read the terminology. You can read the words. Everything sounds good. You sound like you sound like an intelligent person, but you don't have understanding. And that is very much the condition. Well, I don't want to make that jump yet, but let's just hold on to this. This this idea of being able to uh, read, being able to articulate. Being able to even even being able to see signs, because as a matter of fact, uh, Sultan Farum, this is the surah where Allah gives us over and over and over again different ayah, different signs. He says, in yourselves, in the in the the fact that we have created for you mates out of yourselves as a sign. In the sleep that you take by day and by night is a sign in the sign. In the earth, in the moon, there are signs, right? So signs are everywhere. Right, so people could see these things but not understand the implication. So they have vision, they have the faculty of hearing, they have the faculty, they're able to, to read, but they don't have understanding. So Allah is speaking to us in a way to remember our intellect and to question how are we how are we actually using or deploying our intellect? So we'll move on. This morning, well, actually, right before uh, it came out, I was getting dressed and I asked my wife, I put on two different shoes uh, on, on purpose. I wanted her to look at them. I don't want you to think I was about to walk out with two different shoes on. But I put on two different shoes and I say, which which shoe? And she looks, she, she says, you know, she points. Uh, I say, okay. And in my mind, I'm thinking, man, this other shoe is so much more comfortable. Right. And she she told me to put on the, the other shoes, not as comfortable, but I've gotten compliments on that shoe before. Right. And who doesn't like a compliment? Right. But then I thought to myself, I said, you know, it's really interesting. The older you get, the more your shoes look like they're comfortable. Like if you got on, you know, your, your shoes start to look. Yeah, those must be some really comfortable shoes because they don't. They don't look good, <laughs> right? That's they haven't worked that out to, to give us shoes that that look good and are comfortable. <laughs> but I made the decision to put on the uncomfortable shoes. I said, "Wow, right." Once again, there's signs everywhere. 
said, Allah, he tells us, you know, that this deen that he's given us, that this is most suitable for the soul, right? It's the natural, it's the natural fit, right? There's nothing uncomfortable about it. And what looks to some people, they say, man, you, you stop and you pray five times a day. You don't eat for a whole month, sun up, sundown, right? You stop in the middle of the day on Friday, you leave work, and you're not getting paid for this. Right, you leave and work to go to go and pray. All right, you don't you don't drink, you don't go to the boat, you don't gamble. All of these different things to the culture that has placed the value on particular behavior, things that they say this looks good, right? This this makes sense for you to do, and you don't do none of those things. But it's plenty of people. What do we do? We we take on behaviors. We take on attitudes, we take on habits that are not comfortable at all. But in the eyes of community, based on the culture, we look like we fit right in. Right? We'll put on uncomfortable shoes because somebody else says it looks good. So there is, once again, once again, there is a call for our uh, to us to go back to the intellect to understand what is the purpose behind the intellect that Allah has given us and what is the purpose for us uh, how do we use our intellect to move beyond uh, a culture that is actually dysfunctional, actually a culture that takes us out of our comfort zone now when you study uh, uh, leadership and ethics the word ethics comes from the word uh, ethos, right? And one of the words, one of the definitions of the word uh, is not just like habit, but it's also, it's culture, right? It's culture, it's habit. And we have a word for that as well. And the word we use for that is sunnah, right? Sunnah to Allah. We talk about the sunnah of Allah, right? The the the, the habit or the, the pattern or the, uh, the way that Allah defines the thing, the way that Allah responds to, the way that Allah uh, creates and destroys, right? These are these are things that should resonate with us when we consider and we think about culture. Not just, not just the culture that we live in, because this is also, once again, another word that is very popular. You hear people talking about it a lot now, say, we're doing this, we're doing it for the culture. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm repping for the culture. And I and I scratch my head all of the time, and I'm trying to figure out like what culture are you talking about? What what what, what culture are we talking about? Are we talking about a, a culture that's in alignment with our uh, reverence for Allah? Are we talking about a culture that respects the intellect that Allah has made to, made it us with? And we understand that when Allah created Adam and Eve, that was the first. That was his first mate, right? He was mated with intelligence, with intellect. There's nothing that came from him. There's nothing that was possible in terms of discharge and responsibility of Khalifa that could be done without, without the intellect, without the God conscious intellect. Let me rephrase that. Somebody got in trouble. Uh, well, it looks like somebody get in, got in trouble. He had a huge intellect, one of the smartest people that, that we had seen. And I just happened to run across this a couple of days ago. Uh, you all remember Stephen Hawking. At one point, he said there is no God. Adam and about. Right? He probably ran on some more and some more, you know, just thinking about how intelligent he was, thinking about how how much further along he was than everybody else, how much more he saw, how big his brain was. And it was a rather cruel representation because what it showed, it showed him from being this healthy young man who said there's no God and to a, a man that had shrunk and did not look anything like himself and was confined to, confined to a chair, lost all of his mobility, but left with the faculty of intellect. And I don't know if he repeated those words later on in his life, but it is something to consider. 
And it's something to consider the intellect that loses its God consciousness and then loses its ability, loses its ability to understand, right? Talk smart, sounds good, but understands absolutely nothing. And that's the culture. And, and here's, here's, where, excuse me, here's, where, here's where community comes in. As I said, what's the culture that, that people are talking about? The culture is a reflection of the community, right? And community is a movement. Community is a movement. Right, there's no community that is that is active, uh, that is healthy, that is viable, that is not in motion. As a matter of fact, the same principles that uh, that govern the individual govern the community. So we think about a community, we'd ask ourselves, who's the most important person in a community? What's the most important part of the community? Who who is the most important person? Some might say, well, it's the leader. The leader is the most important. But there was a study that was done, and it was about social movements. And they said, actually, the most important person in any social movement, any community, it's not the leader, per se. The leader will provide some direction. People will galvanize around around leader, or they, they, they represent the communal consciousness and, and aspirations. Said, but the most important person is actually the second person that comes along. The second person, that person who decides to be a follower slash supporter, is the most important person. Think about how many people are maybe just on the on the, on the corner right now, speaking absolute truths by themselves, and people won't stop to listen to them. They just write that person off as crazy. All right, this person, this person has nobody that loves them. They're out here making all of this noise. But you find another person that comes along and says, man, I, I, I hear what you're saying, sister. I hear what you're saying, brother. Let me go get some more people because they need to hear this. Right, leadership. Leadership is it's absolutely an important thing. A lot man mandates leadership for us, right? He obligates us to to embrace leadership, to select leaders. But even in the following process, is a uh, there's an exercise of leadership that goes along with that. So the number two person becomes uh, they they carry a weight. They have an importance in establishing community because number two goes out and they get three. The three goes out and they get they get you know five. It's easy for me to work off of uh, off of evens than it is odds. I can go from four to eight to sixteen, thirty-two, thirty-two, sixty-four. Right? It's a little it's a little more challenging when you start going to odds, but um, but there's there's a replication. There's an expansion, a natural expansion that happens. And then you wind up with community. You wind up with community. And the community has a culture. Community has a culture. But if you have leadership that is supported by, or I'm sorry, let me preface that. If you have deranged and dysfunctional and uh, uh, leadership that's supported by I guess a deranged and dysfunctional uh, follower who goes out and gets more people who also don't understand, who who may have the ability to to read, who may have the ability to see and to hear, but they don't understand anything, right? Then you find yourself with a community that has a culture that goes the exact opposite, the exact opposite of what Allah intended for us to have in community. So we have we have a uh, we have a responsibility to one another in community to never abandon our intellect. We have responsibility to one another in community to make sure that we are not doing things that go uh, that take us outside of our comfort zone. 
And I know that's kind of uh, anathema to the idea people tell you, if you want to be successful, you got to go out, be willing to go outside of your comfort zone. Most of the time, that can be true. You know, if you're, you're talking about things like, you know, I'm, I'm shy, it's difficult for me to meet people and difficult for me to talk and present, things like that. Work on those things, right? But the comfort zone we're talking about is the comfort zone that Allah has created, the fitra, right? The, the human, the, 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 uh, uh, the pattern that he has created for the human being, for the human soul, that coincides with the, the religion, this deen that he has given us. That, we don't go outside of that. We stay in that. We stay in our pocket. So we start talking about culture. Culture, we're talking about something that makes sense to us. One more quick example on culture. Especially we talk about when you hear people say we're doing this for the culture. Culture loves Jordans. I started with a shoe reference. So I'm going to give you one more shoe reference. The Jordans are made on the same, in the same factory that a bunch of other shoes are made in, right? It's not a special factory that's just for Jordans. They make all kinds of shoes, same, same factory. And the last I heard, the shoes cost about, cost less than $10 to make per pair, less than $10. And they cost, I haven't bought any, my youngest daughter buys them. Uh, with her own money. Uh, <laughs> but I've never bought any. Maybe maybe I will. Maybe I'll break down and, you know, when I hit 70. I don't know. I might decide that I'm wearing nothing but joy, but I don't see it happening. <laughs> but people pay, what, $250, $300, $400, whatever, you know. And that's because there's a, a cultural valuation that is taking place. The people have decided that this item is worth whatever these people are spending it for. It doesn't matter if it's comfortable. Matter of fact, let me let me go to our sisters, our, our, our beautiful sisters, who are nine times out of ten. This is anecdotal, my own, own experience. Nine times out of ten, likely to wear something that looks good but hurts the hell out of them. <laughs> I say, put on some comfortable shoes or they don't look good. They don't look good. And what happened to me? Now here I am, I'm walking out the house with something uncomfortable on. <laughs> but that's culture. Culture can override intellect. Culture can override your ability to listen to your own body. My feet are killing me, but I look good according to according to society. So we have to, we have to, we have a responsibility to take back, to take back how we have determined, how we, we have come upon these, these agreed upon uh, uh stances on on what on what is worthy of consideration. When a see somebody walking down the street. And they are just all smiles, right? You look down at their feet and you go, hmm, what are those? Instead of, man, that brother or that sister, they, they've got to figure it out. Uh, they got a nice gait on them. You know, they're, they're walking upright. Uh, what are those? I'd like to get some too, because I want to be comfortable. I want to be comfortable. A lot tells us, when we when we're speaking to people of the book, he says to come to common terms. Let us come to common terms, right? As to what we believe that our God is one God, right? What's this guy do with, do with shoes? I understand it's an it's evaluation. It's about it's 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 uh it's determining. It's determining uh what whatever a characteristic characteristic something that is important is it's, it's determining a baseline. Right. If our baseline is comfort, then uh, I should say, if our baseline is how we look, then we will destroy ourselves to look good right now, not understanding that in another 50 years, 60 years, what looks good today looks ridiculous. Right. You see somebody walking around with bell bottoms on today or well, maybe bell bottoms on the way back in. 
<laughs> yeah, you just found it. They they own their way back. <laughs> so if you saved yours. <laughs> so our we have to be a people who understand how our intellect, how how community, how culture, all of these things come together. And when we abandon the intellect that Allah has given us, then we allow ourselves to be subsumed by culture that has no understanding of what a community should actually look like. So these are these are small things for us to look at. But Allah gives us small things to look at for us to do big things with. All right? It's the small realizations that allow us to make these, these giant leaps forward that allow us to actually be a community that is in that is in productive motion, right? It's also important. Once again, we redefine how we how we uh, determine what motion is. Motion is not just it's not just the the moving around, right? It is moving forward. It is moving upward. It is moving with purpose, and that also becomes a part of the culture. That become, becomes part of the sunnah. We don't usually apply the word sunnah to ourselves, but we are leaving a pattern for those who come behind us. And if our pattern is not connected to the pattern that Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established, if our pattern is not, is, is not connected to the pattern of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then, you know, then what, what are we actually, what are we actually leaving? What are we doing? So we don't want to be of those. We pray Allah uh, to keep us from being of those who, who have, who have eyes, but they don't see, who have, have ears, but they don't hear. Right? They look like they're fully functioning people. They got intellect. They can talk. They can make sounds that sound like you know language, but they have no understanding. So we pray that Allah allows our understanding to be a, a means for <laughs> us to develop culture that is in keeping with the intent of, of our creation. For us to develop culture and community that's reflective of the, the comfort the comfort and the fit that Allah has given us with our creation, with, with that is in line with our fitrah. Rabbana, atina fi dunya hasna, wa mufir akhirati hasna, wa mufir akhirati hasna. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. The praise is for Allah, the praise is for Allah, and then the praise is for Allah. I want to take um, these few minutes to remind us of the importance of, uh, once again, understanding how we see these words follower in light of our, our present culture. A culture that often tells us that you don't follow, you don't have to follow nobody but yourself. Right? A culture that stresses a, an extreme uh, individuality, individualism, right? A culture that says that you are here to find what is best for you, and that's it. You're just looking out for yourself. I want to remind us that the leaders that we have had, that we have been blessed with, that Allah has blessed, with, blessed us with, that those leaders had excellent followers. Excellent followers. And those leaders were successful because because Allah blessed them with excellent followers. Excellent followers. And what does it mean to be a follower? What it means to be a follower, number one, you and the leader, you and the leader are both committed to the very same, uh, the very same uh, sense of uh, ethics and morality, the same sunnah of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? If we're talking about in a religious context, if we're talking about political context, right, you can apply the same, same type of thinking, right? Economic, same type of thinking, which means that justice, when Allah tells us as Muslims, he says, stand firmly, stand firmly for, for justice as witnesses uh, uh, to Allah, right? Our, our standing firm for justice overrides, overrides any type of uh uh, sense that you know we have any, any liking that we have any love that we have anybody our sense of justice knowing that Allah is holding us account to account for that that overrides anything so it gives you freedom 
It gives us freedom as followers. Right? It allows us to check our leaders. But it also allows us to go out with a sense of autonomy and sense of independence on behalf of our shared mission. So we think about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. May Allah grant and paradise forgive his sins. We think about somebody who had phenomenal and motivated leaders, followers, who were also leaders. Right? We think about Imam Muhammad. Muhammad. May Allah grant him paradise, a high station in paradise. We think about somebody who we don't, as a matter of fact, you get people mad. Um, but somebody who also had uh, wonderful and strong leaders, and many are still among us. Strong followers who would become leaders, right? And they say you can't lead if you don't know how to follow, which I've seen is, is true, right? Uh, people that don't know how to lead, uh, don't, how to don't know how to follow, make the, the absolute worst leaders. The worst. And I'm going to start naming them off for you right now. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not going to do that. <clears throat> but in terms of in terms of our community life, in terms of, uh, of this masjid community, this is a community that needs that needs follower leaders. That has only been successful because we have had people. We have people who have who have risen to the uh uh, risen to the challenge to of, of representing, of, of being leaders, right? Not saying that I, I gotta be leader, but being leaders. So we can't be we can't be uh thrown off by the public or the, the current uh the, the culture, the sentiments that have us think that we are just here for for ourselves. We can't we can't you know imbibe that we, we can't be about that. We have to understand that if we are going to be successful, if we're going to reach our full potential, it is only going to be because as those who came before us had people that was out there that was hitting it, that was looking for ways to, to plug in, looking for ways to uh, lend their talents and their abilities. It's because we have done the exact same thing. So that's a part, that's a part of our challenge. And when, and when that kind of, uh, those types of dynamics uh, come into, into being, we find ourselves with a community that really has changed the, uh, the definition of, of what of what represents culture, right? We find ourselves uh, giving people a glimpse into what healthy community, what healthy culture that's not separated, right? It's not separated from Allah. It's not separated from the guidance that he has given us. And then we are successful. We're successful in this life. And we're successful in the next life, inshallah. And the last thing I mentioned is that it is important for us to remember that we are looking to leave something for those who come after us. So we leave an example. And we can leave, we can leave an example of extreme individualism. We can leave an example of people who, who you know, if I'm not in charge, I'm not doing nothing. Right? Or we can leave an example of people who say, um, show me, show me what you need me. You know, or this is what I have to offer. Let me plug in. Right? And we leave that type of example. Inshallah, that example is also is emulated. It's something that we pass down. So may Allah protect us. May Allah continue to guide us. May Allah protect us from ourselves. May Allah protect us from any arrogance that might, uh, might be uh, lurking within our hearts. May Allah relieve us of any envy or jealousy. May Allah relieve us of any uncertainty that we might have about ourselves. May Allah allow us to see the best in ourselves and the best in each other. May Allah continue to increase us in love for him, for him, for his book and his messenger. May Allah continue to increase us in love for our brothers and sisters. May Allah make us a community that is able to meet the needs and challenges of the time that we are in. May Allah increase us in our capacity to give. May Allah increase in our hearts the desire to give. May Allah allow us to be the steward, best, the best stewards possible of what he has entrusted us with. And may Allah allow us to be raised up with those who have been given the assurance of Allah's peace and reward on the day of judgment. Amen. Amen. Amen.